We are going to practice pronunciation during tutorial, but we can still begin here with a few basic principles. It may seem like there are a lot of rules, but the rules that we learn are very regular and predictable. Once you know them, you can confidently pronounce any Latin word. There are five vowels, A, E, I, O, and U, pronounced A, E, I, O, I, like the French U. There are long and short varieties of the vowels, and in the ancient form of the language, the long vowels are, strictly speaking, pronounced just like the short vowels are, but sounded out for twice as long. So short A is A, long A, A. Short E, E, long E, E, and so on and so forth. Often, modern students of Latin fudge these rules since there are no ancient Romans around to judge us and use pronunciation that is more comfortable to them. So long E can be pronounced like A in way, or long O like O in hope. How do you know which vowels are long and which are short, you may be asking? Well, you don't. Or rather, you don't unless someone tells you. In your textbook, all long vowels are marked with a macron, or a bar over the vowel. Vowels do not have a vowels that do not have a long a long mark over them in the textbook. We can assume are short. Another group of vowels are the diphthongs. A diphthong is a single vowel sound that is produced by slurring two separate vowels together. They are represented by. Uh, writing two consecutive vowel letters, called a digraph. In classical Latin, the diphthongs are pretty easy to figure out, because you pronounce them literally by taking the one vowel sound and slurring it together with the other, or the second. So, for example, the diphthong A plus E is pronounced I, as in A plus E. A, E, which together become I. The diphthong O, E is pronounced OI, like in boy. O plus E together produce OI. Here are the major Latin consonants. Medieval Latin is a little bit different, but in the ancient variety of the language, each letter generally has only one consistent pronunciation. The letter G is always hard, G as in gate, not J as in giraffe. The letter C is always hard, K like in cat, never S as in cider. The letter V was pronounced like an English W. And when the letter I appears before a vowel, it often has the force of a of a consonant, which would be pronounced like the English letter Y. The last major set of rules to learn are the, are the rules that govern which syllable you stress in a word. Stress refers to one particular syllable in a word in which you expel more air than in the other syllables. So in the word library, the first of the three syllables receives the stress, library. In the word computer, on the other hand, it is the second syllable that is stressed, computer. The stress of Latin words follows very regular rules. If a word has two syllables, it is always the first syllable that is stressed. So amo. I love is pronounced ah mo. For longer words, the stress is always the stress will always fall on the second to last syllable or the third to last syllable. Now the next part will seem complicated, 
but when you master it, you will be able to pronounce any Latin word. To decide whether the second to last or third to last syllable is stressed, look at the second to last syllable first. Specifically, look at the vowel in the second to last syllable. If that syllable has a long vowel or a diphthong, or any vowel followed by two consonants, then that syllable, the second to last one, is stressed. If the second to last syllable has a short vowel followed by only one consonant or no consonant, then the stress goes uh, back onto the third to last syllable. Or I suppose it goes forward onto the third to last syllable. Here are some examples. In the word amamus, we love, the second to last syllable has a long letter A, and so it is stressed. However, the word dikimus, we speak, has a short vowel in the second to last syllable. And that short vowel is followed by only one consonant, that letter M. Therefore, you cannot place the stress on the second to last syllable. It has to go forward to the third to last syllable. Dikimus, not dikimus. Here are some examples from the first chapter. Ambulat, festin, festinat, parata, femina, and puella. The second to last syllable of ambulat has a short vowel followed by one syllable, so the stress moves back to the third to last syllable, ambulat. In the word festinat, the second to last syllable has a long vowel, long i, so that syllable automatically receives the stress, festinat. In the word femina, the second to last syllable has a short vowel, short i, followed by only one consonant. So the stress moves forward to the previous syllable, femina. Or it moves back to the previous syllable, femina. In the word parata, the second to last syllable has a long vowel, long a. So that syllable receives the stress, parata. In the last word on the list, the word puella has a short vowel in the second to last syllable, but, is it, but it is a short vowel followed by two consonants, two L's. The two consonants make the syllable take a little bit longer to pronounce, so we can count the syllable as long, even though it has a short vowel. That is why this word, that is why in this word, the second to last syllable still receives the stress. Puella.